when my brother asked me if I wanted to head out west and try elk hunting this year, I couldn't have said yes any faster. The western states are something I had only read about, so I really looked forward to the adventure. We asked our cousin Mason to join us as we decided to try something no one in our family had ever done. Hunting archery out west, unguided, on public land. <laughs> In preparation for this, we had done multiple overnight trips, testing our gear, and getting conditioned for what will lie ahead. Using Google Earth, we searched all of Colorado and decided on a spot that we thought would hold elk. We picked a unit that sold over-the-counter tags so that we wouldn't have to worry about not being drawn that year. And after many months of scouring topa maps, reading countless books, and buying the best gear money can buy, we were on our way. With only 24 hours of driving between us and our hunting spot, we hit the road. Once we arrived, we realized that the mountains were even bigger than we anticipated. So we grabbed one last bite to eat and decided to come up with a plan. Where do we want to camp tonight? Up here or up here? Right here somewhere. Yeah, that's what Somewhere in here and then tomorrow we'll... This, this looks like it could be, be sweet to glass off of too. Yeah, but to get in there is the challenge because we'd have to get in like After three. strapping our packs on and starting our way up the mountain, we realized getting anywhere seemed to be a challenge. The air is much thinner at 8,000 feet, making us stop frequently. Our biggest problem the first day there was finding a way down off the ridge we set camp up on. The train was extremely steep and nothing but loose dirt. Once we set up camp, we decided to go find some water to fill up our hydration bladders. On the way down, we spotted an owl less than 10 feet away. Taking that as a sign of good luck, we made a set in hopes of luring something into the open. With nothing in sight and darkness coming fast, we pushed on. Within minutes of us starting to filter our water, we encountered our first surprise thunderstorm. While it wasn't a bad one, it made us realize how fast the weather can change in the mountains. Once the storm passed and we arrived at what we labeled our glassing spot, we let out a locating bugle. About a minute after we turned the camera off, we hear our first bugle. It's in the valley below us, but with only a few minutes of light left, we have to wait until morning to go after him. The next day didn't go how we'd hoped. We made a few sets and spooked some out of their beds. Although we never found the bull that bugled the night before, we found a lot of sign and still had high hopes. A mule deer carcass was there to remind us that we weren't in Pennsylvania anymore. It had been killed and buried by a lion then dug up by a bear sometime later. After dinner, we headed back to camp for the night, armed with a plan for the next day. As most people know, plans change. That night when we crawled into our sleeping bags, bugles lit up the opposing valley below us. Everyone was ready to go after the two bulls we could hear, but that meant going into a valley we had yet to explore. When we showed up to the lake in the morning, we again heard the bugles. As we tried to make our way around, we spotted two nice bulls along with three cows, walking toward the lake. They spotted us and didn't stick around long. I immediately let out a bugle and instantly got a response. Bo and Mason went ahead trying to spot and stalk, while I stayed back getting them to sound off so they knew their location. Doing everything from raking trees to challenging them to a fight, the bulls were fired up. Swirling winds combined with some confusion between us led to us being unsuccessful.
Day four started very eventful. We showed up to the area we had seen them the day before and spotted the herd feeding above us in an opening. We tried to make an approach, but the changing winds limited us. After they disappeared over the hill, we couldn't locate them again. Days five and six blended together as nothing significant happened. The storms finally cleared up and the bueling came to a stop. We decided to hike back and camp at the truck the last night, hoping to shed most of our gear and go in light the last day. With only half a day left to hunt, we headed to a lower elevation. Again, nothing was bugling, so once it settled in that we were going home empty-handed, our thoughts turned to warm showers and cold beer. Although we didn't fill our tags, we consider this a successful hunt. We went to a place we've never been and found elk five out of the seven days. Tested our bodies physically and our minds mentally. It's not about killing an animal, more the experience had and the memories made. You can bet that we'll be back and that this is just the start of an addiction. Living the dream. <laughs>